The vastness of space seemed even more immense as alarm sirens echoed through the USS Vanguard. Captain Jake Sullivan, a seasoned veteran of space warfare, paced the bridge with his eyes fixed on the unfolding scenario. Star maps and live feeds painted a grim picture. A massive alien fleet had emerged from warp space near Saturn, and their trajectory was a direct path to Earth. Captain All Decks reporting ready, announced Lieutenant Mara Jensen, her voice steady despite the tension that gripped the crew. Sullivan nodded, absorbing the severity of their situation. Orion, give me a full diagnostic on their fleet. How many ships are we dealing with? The ship's AI, a sophisticated network of quantum computers, responded promptly. Analysis indicates approximately 200 vessels of varying sizes and armaments, significantly more advanced than any known Earth technology. Murmurs of concern spread across the bridge. Sullivan raised his hand for silence. This is what we train for, he said confidently, although his heart raced. We are Earth's first line of defense. I need everyone's focus. He turned to his communications officer. Send a priority signal to Earth Command. Inform them of the situation and tell them we're engaging the enemy. As the Vanguard moved to intercept the alien fleet, tactical displays showed the overwhelming odds. The alien ships, sleek and menacing, were unlike anything humanity had ever encountered. Their hulls reflected the sunlight with a metallic sheen, marked by symbols that glowed with an eerie light. Sir, they're hailing us, Mara reported, her brow furrowed as she adjusted the communications panel. On screen, Sullivan commanded. The main view screen flickered to life, revealing the visage of the alien commander. His skin was a pale blue, his eyes dark and devoid of pupils, and his voice, when he spoke, was chillingly emotionless. Human vessel, you stand in the way of the Vraxian Dominion. Surrender your planet, or face annihilation. Sullivan's jaw tightened. This is Captain Jake Sullivan of the USS Vanguard. Earth will not surrender to threats. Withdraw your fleet, or we will engage. The alien's lips curled into a semblance of a smile. So be it, human. The transmission ended abruptly, and the space ahead lit up with the glow of charging weapons. Shields up, prepare to fire, Sullivan ordered. As the first volleys of alien fire streaked towards them, the Vanguard's shields shimmered under the impact. Earth's technology held, but barely. Orion, target their lead ships. Fire all forward cannons, Sullivan commanded, gripping the rail as the ship shuddered under the onslaught. The Vanguard's cannons roared to life, sending pulses of energy hurtling towards the alien fleet. Explosions blossomed in the void where the pulses met alien shields, but the effect was less than hoped. We're barely scratching them, Captain, Mara observed grimly, analyzing the readouts. Sullivan knew they needed a different approach. Time to change tactics. Helm. Take us into the asteroid belt. We'll use it for cover and figure out a way to hit them harder. As the vanguard dived towards the rocky debris field of the asteroid belt, Sullivan contemplated their next move. He knew the survival of Earth hinged on their ability to adapt and overcome this alien threat, no matter the odds. The battle for humanity's future had just begun. The USS Vanguard maneuvered through the asteroid belt with precision, the massive rocks providing a fleeting cover from the relentless alien assault. Captain Jake Sullivan watched the tactical display closely, noting each blast that rocked the alien ships when they misjudged the asteroid trajectories. Lieutenant Jensen, status on our armaments and crew? Sullivan asked, his voice calm but urgent over the sound of alarms. We have minor damages to our hull, but shields are holding at 70%. All crew members are accounted for and ready, Mara reported, her fingers flying over the control panel to reroute power where it was most needed. Good. Let's not make this easy for them. Prepare to execute guerrilla tactics, hit and fade, make every shot count, Sullivan instructed, turning to his navigator. Mr. Kim, plot a course that keeps us unpredictable and use the larger asteroids for sudden turns and stops. Navigator Kim nodded, his hands already adjusting their path. Course laid in, Captain. As the vanguard dipped and darted between asteroids, Sullivan turned his attention to the offensive strategy. Orion, Link with weapon systems and calculate firing solutions based on predictive algorithms. We need to outsmart their superior tech. Yes, Captain, implementing now, the AI responded, its voice a soothing contrast to the chaos outside. The ship's cannons fired in precise, calculated bursts, targeting the alien supply lines now visible as they extended towards the back of the fleet. Each hit caused significant disruptions, confirmed by the sudden energy fluctuations on the enemy ships. 
Mara, open a channel to Earth Command. They need to hear about this, Sullivan said, a plan forming in his mind. Mara nodded, and soon the grizzled face of Admiral Harris appeared on the screen. Sullivan, report. Admiral, the enemy uses advanced tech, but we found a weak point in their supply lines. With coordinated strikes, we can starve them of resources and slow their advance, Sullivan explained, detailing the tactical maneuvers and their effects. Admiral Harris's eyes narrowed as he processed the information. Understood. I'm mobilizing additional squadrons to your coordinates. Continue your harassment tactics until they arrive. Acknowledged, sir. Vanguard out. Sullivan cut the communication and turned to his crew. You heard the man. Let's give them hell until the cavalry arrives. For hours, the Vanguard and later additional Earth ships engaged the alien fleet using hit-and-run tactics. They exploited every small victory, slowly chipping away at the aliens' operational capacity. During a brief lull in the engagement, Sullivan and his crew caught their breath. He looked at his team, pride swelling in his chest despite the dire circumstances. Everyone's doing great. Keep focused. We're not just fighting for our lives. We're fighting for Earth. Suddenly, an urgent beep from the communication panel caught Mara's attention. Captain, new transmission from the alien fleet. It's different this time. On screen, Sullivan commanded, his gaze fixed on the view screen, ready to face the alien commander once again. This time the message was stark, the threat more palpable. Human vessel, your resistance is noted. Cease your attacks or we will commence total annihilation of your home. Sullivan's response was resolute, his voice steady. We will never surrender. Earth will resist you at every turn. Withdraw now, while you still can. As the screen went dark, the crew of the Vanguard prepared for the next phase of their desperate defense. They knew the real battle was just beginning, and each of them was ready to fight to the end for their planet, their home. As the alien threats escalated, so did the resolve of Earth's defenders. Captain Jake Sullivan and the crew of the USS Vanguard were deep within the fray, leveraging every tactical advantage the asteroid belt offered. The relentless series of skirmishes had started to take their toll on the alien logistics, yet the threat of a direct assault on Earth loomed ever closer. In the dim light of the war room aboard the Vanguard, Sullivan met with his key officers. The mood was grim but determined. Dr. Harold Green, the ship's lead scientist, had been working tirelessly on the intercepted alien communications, and now he had something significant to share. Captain, we've made a breakthrough, Dr. Green announced, his voice tinged with fatigue but underlined with excitement. The alien fleet seems to be controlled via a networked hive mind, heavily reliant on synchronized commands from their flagship. Sullivan leaned forward, intrigued. Are you suggesting we can disrupt their coordination? Exactly, Dr. Green confirmed. If we can jam their communications, even momentarily, it could throw them into disarray. Give us an opening. Sullivan turned to Mara, his tactical officer. Lieutenant, prepare a strike team. We're going to hit them where it hurts. Dr. Green, I need you to devise a jamming device capable of disrupting their signals. The next hours were a flurry of preparation. The strike team, led by Sullivan himself, was briefed and equipped for a covert operation. They would use a modified shuttle to infiltrate the moon's surface, where the aliens had established their primary communications hub. Under the cover of a meteor shower, the shuttle descended towards the moon. The surface was stark, illuminated by the harsh light of the sun against the gray dust. As they approached the alien hub, the scale of the operation became evident, towering structures emitting pulsating lights surrounded by alien ships. Orion, activate the jamming device on my mark, Sullivan whispered into his communicator, his eyes fixed on the target. Now, he ordered as they closed in on the facility. The device activated, sending waves of disruptive frequencies. For a moment, the alien communications flickered, causing visible confusion among the fleet. Seizing the opportunity, Sullivan and his team launched their assault, fighting their way into the hub. Inside, they encountered stiff resistance. Alien soldiers, unlike any terrestrial form, clashed with the human intruders, their movements synchronized and precise. The corridors echoed with the sounds of gunfire and alien shrieks. We need to reach the central core, Sullivan shouted over the din, leading his team deeper into the structure. They planted charges along critical junctions, aiming to cripple the facility permanently. As they reached the core, Mara, who had been covering their rear, reported, Captain, enemy reinforcements incoming. We don't have much time. Sullivan nodded, setting the timer on the explosives. Everyone fall back to the shuttle. 
This is going to get hot. With seconds to spare, the team retreated, racing against the clock. The explosions rocked the moon's surface as they lifted off, debris and shockwaves chasing them into the sky. As they cleared the moon's gravity, Sullivan looked back at the crippled alien hub, its structures now a twisted wreckage. Orion, report. Did we do enough? Affirmative, Captain, the AI responded. Alien fleet communications are significantly disrupted. Earth forces are initiating counterattacks across all sectors. Relief washed over Sullivan as he turned the shuttle back towards the vanguard. They had struck a decisive blow, giving Earth not just hope, but a fighting chance. The battle was far from over, but for the first time, victory seemed within reach. With the alien communications hub in ruins, the tide of battle began to shift. Captain Jake Sullivan, back aboard the USS Vanguard, now saw a clearer path to pushing the alien forces back. Earth's fleet, bolstered by the success of the moon operation, was ready to launch a full-scale counterattack. Orion status report, Sullivan ordered as he stepped onto the bridge, where the crew was bustling with renewed vigor. Communications among the alien fleet remain chaotic, Captain. Efficiency has dropped by approximately 40%. Earth's allied fleets are regrouping and taking advantage of the situation, the AI reported. Sullivan nodded, his eyes scanning the holographic displays showing the positions of both Earth and alien forces. It's time to take the fight to them. Mara, coordinate with the other ships. We need a united front. Target their command ships first. Without their leaders, they'll crumble. Mara acknowledged with a determined look. Yes, Captain, relaying now. The next hours saw intense preparation across Earth's defense fleet. Ships of all sizes and capabilities aligned in formation, their weapon systems targeting the now vulnerable alien vessels. The vanguard led the charge, piercing through the outer defenses of the alien armada with a ferocity that had been impossible before the communications breakdown. In the heart of the battle, Sullivan piloted his ship with precision, weaving through enemy lines and delivering crippling blows to key alien ships. Explosions lit up the void of space as Earth's forces pushed the invaders back towards Mars. Orion, direct all available power to forward shields and weapons. We're not letting them escape, Sullivan commanded, his voice echoing with authority. As the USS Vanguard closed in on the largest alien command ship, a massive vessel that dwarfed all others, Sullivan prepared for a decisive confrontation. This is it. Focus all fire on that command ship. If it goes down, the rest will falter. Energy cannons and missiles streaked across space, a deadly dance of light and destruction. The alien command ship's shields flickered under the relentless assault, finally shattering in a spectacular display of light. Cheers erupted on the bridge of the vanguard as the command ship began to implode, its structure failing and detonating in a chain reaction that damaged nearby alien ships. Mara, update from the rest of the fleet, Sullivan asked his eyes still fixed on the view screen as they monitored the retreating alien forces. We have them on the run, Captain. Several smaller groups have already surrendered and others are scattering. Earth's orbital defenses are mopping up the remnants, Mara reported, relief evident in her tone. Sullivan allowed himself a moment to soak in the victory, but his strategic mind was already moving forward. Organize search and rescue teams for any downed vessels, ours and theirs. We need prisoners for intelligence and get me a direct line to Earth Command. Admiral Harris will want to hear about this. As the remnants of the alien fleet fled the solar system, Earth's forces celebrated. But Sullivan knew the war was not yet over. The victory was significant, but the aliens had been repelled, not defeated. They needed to prepare, to strengthen Earth's defenses, and to ensure that no future threat could ever come so close again. The counteroffensive marked a new beginning for humanity's role in the cosmos. No longer just defenders of their own world, they had proven themselves capable of uniting and repelling a superior enemy through ingenuity, bravery, and sheer determination. The aftermath of the decisive counteroffensive left the alien forces in disarray, but Captain Jake Sullivan knew that the war was far from over. As the scattered alien fleet regrouped for what could be their final assault, Earth's defenders rallied to protect their planet from total annihilation. Back on the bridge of the USS Vanguard, Sullivan and his crew monitored the situation closely. The alien remnants had formed a new formation beyond Mars, seemingly preparing for a last-ditch effort to seize Earth. Mara, how are our allies holding up? Sullivan asked, his eyes never leaving the tactical displays. Reports are coming in now, Captain. 
All fleets are at readiness and orbital defenses are fully operational. We've also got additional support from the lunar bases. They're ready to provide whatever we need. Mara replied, her voice steady despite the tension that filled the room. Sullivan nodded, appreciative of the effort and resilience of Earth's forces. Let's make sure it wasn't all for nothing. Orion, calculate the most probable attack vectors. We need to anticipate their moves. Calculations complete, Captain. Predicting three possible approaches. Most likely they'll attempt a pincer movement. They're desperate, the AI informed them. As the alien fleet began its advance, Earth's combined forces positioned themselves strategically. This wasn't just a battle. It was a defense of their home, their families, and their future. The battle commenced with a fierce exchange of fire. The alien ships, though fewer in number and weakened by their previous losses, fought with a reckless intensity. The sky above Earth was ablaze with streaks of light as missiles and energy beams crisscrossed the atmosphere. Focus fire on their lead ships, break their momentum, Sullivan commanded. Under his leadership, the vanguard spearheaded the attack, diving into the heart of the alien formation. The battle was brutal and intense. Every member of the vanguard's crew worked with a precision born of desperation and hope. They maneuvered through the enemy lines, exploiting every weakness and turning the aliens' desperation against them. In the thick of battle, a massive alien dreadnought broke through the defensive perimeter, its weapons charging for a devastating blow. Sullivan made a split-second decision. All hands brace for impact. Mara, direct all power to frontal shields. We're going in. With a determined grimace, Sullivan steered the vanguard directly at the dreadnought. The collision was catastrophic, sending shockwaves through both ships. The vanguard's shields held just long enough to breach the dreadnought's armor, allowing them to fire directly into its core. The explosion was monumental, lighting up the sky as if a new sun had risen. Debris from the dreadnought scattered across space, damaging several other alien ships in its vicinity. As the dust settled, the alien fleet's resolve finally broke. Their last stand faltered, and one by one their remaining ships began to retreat or surrender. Sullivan, his uniform torn and his face smeared with soot, stood on the bridge of the battered but not beaten vanguard. Report, he barked, his voice hoarse but commanding. We've done it, Captain. The alien fleet is retreating. Earth's defenses are holding. They're calling back their forces across all sectors, Mara reported, a smile breaking through her exhaustion. The crew of the vanguard erupted into cheers, hugging and clapping each other on the back. Sullivan allowed himself a moment to join in the celebration, then turned his gaze towards Earth, visible through the viewport, serene and beautiful. We'll need to stay vigilant, rebuild, and prepare. But for now, Earth is safe. Thanks to every one of you, Sullivan said, his voice filled with pride and gratitude. As peace settled over the planet, the people of Earth began the long process of recovery and rebuilding, knowing that they had not only survived but had grown stronger through the trial by fire. They were ready for whatever the future might bring united more than ever in the defense of their home. In the aftermath of the final battle, Earth was a changed place. The alien threat was neutralized, and humanity was given a second chance to fortify their defenses and rethink their position in the cosmos. Captain Jake Sullivan, having played a pivotal role in Earth's defense, was now a key figure in planning the future of planetary security. As he walked through the corridors of the newly established Interplanetary Defense Command on Earth, Sullivan felt the weight of his new responsibilities. He was met with salutes and respectful nods, symbols of the trust and expectation placed upon him. We've started receiving delegations from other planetary systems, Captain, informed Admiral Harris, meeting Sullivan in the strategic planning room. They're eager to learn from our experience and discuss potential alliances. It seems your actions have resonated far beyond our solar system. Sullivan nodded thoughtfully. We need to be prepared. The universe is vast, and we can't afford to be caught off guard again. Establishing these alliances could be crucial. Admiral Harris agreed, pointing to a star map projected in the center of the room. These are the systems that have extended offers of technology exchange and mutual defense packs. We're not just defending Earth anymore. We're becoming part of a galactic community. As the discussions continued, Sullivan was pulled aside by Mara Jensen, who had been promoted to commander and was now serving as his chief strategic advisor. There's something you need to see, she said, leading him to a private viewing area overlooking Earth. The planet below was peaceful, 
its blues and greens vibrant against the backdrop of space. Mara handed him a tablet showing the latest surveillance data. Since the destruction of the alien fleet, there have been no signs of further aggression. It seems we've truly achieved peace, at least for now. Sullivan looked at the data, then out at the planet. We've been given a rare opportunity, Mara. We defended our home, and now we build a better future not just for us, but for our children and for all of humanity. Mara nodded, her expression serious yet hopeful. The rebuilding efforts are underway, and there's talk of a new constitution, one that includes provisions for interstellar relations and defense. The world's changed, Sullivan mused. We're no longer just Earthlings. We're citizens of the universe. Our responsibilities have grown, but so have our capabilities and our allies. The following weeks were a whirlwind of activity. Sullivan was deeply involved in the formation of new defense protocols and the establishment of a United Earth Senate, which aimed to unify the planet's governments in a way never before seen. His leadership during the crisis had not only saved Earth, but it also catapulted him into a position where he could shape its future. One evening, standing on the observation deck of the Defense Command, Sullivan watched as a fleet of ships from a newly allied planet arrived, their hulls glinting in the sunlight. He felt a profound sense of accomplishment, but knew this was just the beginning. We've got a second chance, Sullivan whispered to Mara, who joined him to watch the arrival. Let's make sure we use it wisely. Mara smiled her eyes reflecting the light of the incoming ships. We will, Jake. We'll make sure of it.